So we've seen reference to the term valence electrons when we talked about the classification of elements. Um, also, now that we've talked about ions, it's these valence electrons actually hold very important properties for certain groups on the periodic table. So if you look at Einsteinium, okay, and it has tons of electrons, right? They form these rings around the nucleus, all right? But really, the only electrons that are available for bonding are the ones in the outermost circle, so these red ones here. Okay, and those are your valence electrons. So valence electrons, by definition, are the outer, the electrons in the outermost shell. Okay, um, we'll get more into this later um, as far as how energy and things like that relates to this. But for now, you just need to know that they are in the outermost shell and that they are the electrons that we can actually use for bonding. The ones on the inner shells, they're too blocked by the outer shell electrons to be used for bonding. Okay, generally speaking, on the outer shell, there's an option for eight valence electrons, and in nature, kind of the goal of most elements is to make it so that their outer shell has eight. Okay? So, just to re-remind you, because there's a pattern related to this, everything in group one has one valence electron, okay? Everything in Group 2 has two valence electrons, and then group 13, or if you're going with Roman numerals, this would be Roman numeral 3, has three valence electrons. 14 has four, group 15 has five, six, have seven, noble gases have eight. All right, except for helium, which only has two, but essentially all of these have full outer shells. Okay. And that plays into why the noble gases are unreactive. Because they already have the eight electrons that we want. Now, the transition metals, a lot of times we don't talk about them because they're variable. There's not as much of a pattern to how many valence electrons they have. Typically speaking, they have one or two, but even when you saw it in the ion thing, they have, they generally speaking, make different kinds of ions. So really we're going to focus on the Roman numeral groups, 1 through 8, or 1, 2, and then 13 on. Okay. Same thing, lanthanides and actinides, technically they fall within the same, they match the transition metals as far as their number of valence of electrons, and also they, too, also have can have multiple ion options. So, valence electrons and the number that the atom has relates to the ions that are formed. Generally speaking, if an atom has fewer than four valence electrons, it is more likely to give up those electrons, to drop down, go in one more shell so that they have a full shell, instead of picking up electrons. Okay, so that, that's why all of the things in row 1 and 2 tended to make positive cations. Okay, so if you think about it, if this is the sodium atom, we have one valence electron, all right, and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in the shell below that. So sodium, it's in the first row, very often or sorry, first column, very often will give up that electron so that it can drop down to the shell below it where they have the full octet and they have the stability that comes with that. Okay? So atoms with fewer than four valence electrons, generally speaking, make cations. Whereas the other way around, atoms with more than four valence electrons prefer to take on the couple of extra electrons that they need in order to complete their octet. Okay, so for example, this chlorine, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, it's going to be a lot easier for this chlorine to just grab an extra electron and fill that outer shell than it would be to give up seven electrons to drop down to the lower shell. 
okay? So atoms with more than four valence electrons, so we're talking um, rows 15, 16, 17, they typically pick up extra electrons and become anions. So if you remember from our ion activity, really we don't necessarily talk about this specifically with the transition elements, but this has one valence electron. Okay, so a lot of times it gives up that one electron to take on a plus one charge. This column has two valence electrons. A lot of times it'll give up those two electrons to have a plus two charge. Okay, and then this row has three valence, or column has three valence electrons. Okay, and again, that's less than four, so it'll typically give up those three extra electrons, making it a positive three charge. Okay, um, carbon's row, because it has four, honestly, it kind of depends on what it's reacting with as to whether or not it gives up electrons or takes on electrons. Um, so that's why this one's not necessarily filled in that much. But then it, when you get past that middle range and you have the point where you have more than four electrons, so there's five valence electrons in nitron, nitrogen's column, they're more likely to pick up three extra electrons to get to eight, making a three, negative three charge. All right, same thing with six valence electrons. If we pick up two more electrons, that gets us to eight, so that's why this column has, generally speaking, uh, ions make anions all right, with a negative two charge. And then our seven valence electrons, they just pick up one extra electron to get a negative one charge. Okay, and then the... Noble gases never form ions because they have enough electrons. They don't want to give them up or take on any extras. And it's one reason why they are incredibly unreactive. So what this leads to is dot notation. because This is going to help us when we get into um, actually talking about bonding and sharing electrons or giving up electrons depending on the type of bonding we talk about. So when doing a dot notation, okay, it's named after Lewis, um, who was a scientist that came up with this formatting, you only see valence electrons, okay? So you put in the number of valence electrons it has. So these are kind of easy. The formatting is X, that's your abbreviation, all right? You don't write out the word carbon, you put in C, okay? You don't write out lithium, you put in Li. And then you just draw dots around it, Okay, and each side, if you think about it, it's a letter, there's four sides to it. Each side can have a maximum of two. So if you look here, the full octet, there's two above, two to the right, two to the bottom, and two to the left. Okay, and generally speaking, you spread them out because you can think of atoms like circles. The electrons are going to spread apart from each other as much as they can, okay, so it's not like you sit there and draw in for four valence electrons, two on top, two on the side. It's one in each spot. So it's kind of like you fill each spot once, and then you go back around and add the second one. That's the proper formatting for these. To see actual examples, lithium is in column one, so it has one valence electron. So its dot notation is lithium in one dot. Okay, Beryllium is Be with two dots. All right, and you put the dots on opposite sides so that they're spread out as much as they can. Boron is in column 13, so that has three valence electrons. All right, in This one, really, you probably could put the other one down here and not have one up top, and that's kind of the same spread. It's just generally speaking, it kind of makes more sense to do the top before the bottom. If you think about normally how you write or read things, you go from top first and then to the bottom. But carbon has one dot on all sides because it has four valence electrons. And then you can see with nitrogen, you start refilling in the spots where you did before. So we put one dot on the right side. With oxygen, we put another dot on the left side. Fluorine, we finish the top. And then neon, which has its full octet and eight valence electrons, we 
finish with the last dot on the bottom. Okay? So, what I want you to do is see if you can draw the dot diagrams for these um, elements. And then I'll do it as well. Pause the video right now. Get it written down on your paper. See if you did it right. And then I'll do them for you so that you know if you did them right. So if you look for calcium, calcium is in column two. So we want two valence electrons. And we're spreading them out as much as possible. And then if you find sodium, sodium is... Na, and that's in column one, so we just have one valence electron. Sulfur is abbreviated S. If you find that, that's in column six, so we have six valence electrons. So we have the full four. One, two, three, four. And then fill in the right side and the left side. And then we have six. Argon is a noble gas. Move this over here so I don't run out of space. So that's going to have all eight filled in for eight valence electrons. Chlorine is in column seven, so it has seven valence electrons. So we're going to fill in the first row, or the first set, and then we double up on the right side, left side, and the top to get to seven. And then aluminum is in column 3 if you're going with Roman numerals, or 13 if you're going with numbers. So that has three valence electrons. So right side, left side, top. Okay? So know how to draw the dot diagrams. Hopefully if you have questions about how the valence electrons become the anions or cations, make sure you ask, but please do the online form or online quiz.